Hello everybody, it's Paul Pointhander, Sam with Magic Gathering Strat, doing a new video series that I'm going to start doing in uh, one moment. Okay, I might have coughed. I'm not sure if I paused in time. Um, and as you can tell from the title, it is going to be the set review show. I'm going to go through chronologically all the sets in Magic history, starting with Alpha and then continuing on into the end of time because hopefully the sets will never stop coming out. Um, one of my goals in this is just to review the older sets, um, to give some trivia where I have trivia, because of course some of these older sets have a lot of like quirks to them, and um, just to really get into what the history of Magic has looked like. I know there's a lot of players that haven't been around for a long time, or started with like Return to Ravnica, or Anistrad, and might not really know what the golden dark days of magic are, were like. Um, and I started um, in between revised and fourth, or in between fourth and ice age, somewhere in that area. Um, so I got to experience a lot of this um, earlier stuff um, because it was, that would have been 95 or 96 when I started playing. Um, so, and the game started in 93. So I did miss alpha beta unlimited but um not by too terribly much um and not only that but i don't think there was a large supply of the cards in my state it was mostly at that point a west coast thing um but um one thing to kind of go over um while alpha beta unlimited they're basically the same set um and we'll talk about uh the big difference between alpha and beta um and then Unlimited is the same set as um, Al uh, Beta, but it's white-bordered. And I really have a strong dislike of white-bordered cards. Um, I don't like to look at them. They hurt my eyes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and basically we'll talk a little bit about Alpha. And then I'm going to do the actual kind of review on um, Beta. Yeah, just because besides a few cards, um, they're the same sets so okay so alpha first set um released on the 5th of august of 1993 um it was designed mainly by richard garfield um and he had a limited edition design team basically um they're pretty much uh, they're probably involved with the earlier sets the big names are um Scaf Elias and bill rose they I think Bill Rose might still work for them, and then Scaff Elias, he won some of the earlier Pro Tours or something, like, he was a player. <sighs> what else? Um, let's see. The big part... One moment. <coughs> have a bit of a sore throat. The big part about Alpha, it being the first set, they didn't really have, like, a printer yet, so they used a playing card company to print the cards and they had a more rounded corner. Um, so they're actually less desirable, but you know, the power nine is always desirable. Um, also being the first set, they, for some strange reason, they decided, decided they didn't want players to guess what rarity their cards were. So they included lands into each sheet. Uh, and what that did was it made it possible to get lands as rares, uncommons, and commons. And this is pre them jamming basic lands into every pack. Um, also, Circle of Protection Black and Volcanic Island were missed entirely on the print run. Um, other things, Douglas Schuler's name was misspelled on any art that he did to include a C in between the S and the H. And he did, oh, 25 cards or something like that. Um, so that was big. Um, let's see. Uh, Circle Protection Red was credited to Anson Maddox. It should have been Mark Teden. Um, Cyclopean Tomb was printed without a mana cost. Um, yeah, a lot of art was wrong. Demonic Hordes. Printed with an upkeep cost of literally BBB instead of three black mana symbols. Elvis Archers was printed with the power of toughness as one of one Q instead of T1. Um, let's see, other ones. 
Goblin Bur Balloon Brigade is pretty funny, and it's the same way on the Unlimited version, where it could give any goblins flying because of the wording. I'll highlight that when I get to it. So that's some interesting, like, misprint info. Um, and then they also did kind of an oddball thing. They had some art, um, apparently, and I'm going to get to that because I can't remember quite the five cards. But they had basically five cards that they had commissioned art for, and then they decided at the last possible second, like right before it went, the run went to print, um, that they wanted to use the art because they liked the art and they didn't like no testing they just jammed them in and their island sanctuary stasis were to command sedge troll and birds of paradise and for most of those birds of paradise of course being like a great card but you just think if they had done a little testing on stasis maybe we would not have had to suffer through so many really bogged down games in our youth where we just felt bad about life in general. Okay, so um, that's kind of alpha. Um, you're going to notice that the wording is pretty much all the same. I'm not going to click to the next page here because I'm just going to basically close alpha out, leaving only unlimited open or beta open. Now, on some of these cards, because the wording was not. Um, Every set basically at the beginning had different wording up until about 6th edition. Um, and then things got a lot more uniformed. <laughs> so on some of these cards, I basically, I can't read the wording. So I'll click in and I'll read the oracle text um, because it's just a lot more defined. Some of the cards, I couldn't tell you what they do, even if I could read the wording. Um, so, but let's go ahead and kind of get started. Um, so that's this good introduction. Oh, and as I go through, um, I thought it would be fun to kind of keep track of cards that I would build into a powered cube, um, a power 360, just for fun um, to give a, another little layer. Um, as I hit things like cycles, um, I will let you know, hey, this is part of a cycle. This is the cycle for this. Um, and these earlier sets had a lot of different cycles, like color hosers. They had um, laces or a cycle. There's a cycle of the wards. You can see the first one right there on the screen. Um, so there, these are full of cycles. So um, in unlimited, the Douglas Shul or beta, the Douglas Shuler art was still all messed up. The Goblin Balloon Brigade and Goblin King gave all goblins um, their effect because when you see the card, it just says goblins. It doesn't say goblins you control or creature type goblins or anything. Uh, so very useful with the Balloon Brigade because it can only give itself flying, but with the way it's worded, it would be able to give any goblin on board flying. So, all right, so getting started. Starting with, uh, I'm just going to go through Wooberg every show just because that's how Gatherer brings it up. And for now, I'm using Gatherer. Later on, I might switch it, might make slideshows with zany thingies or whatever, but I doubt it. Um, okay, so first one Animate Wall. Um, a rare. Um, one white, and Enchanted Wall can attack as though it didn't have def Defender, but. Original wording, target wall can now attack. Target wall's power and toughness are unchanged, even if its power is zero. So it was a rare all the way till Master's Edition. Like, all the way to 6th Edition, it was a rare. And that would just be a poopy rare. Um, Armageddon, all lands in play are destroyed. Um, I can remember, yeah, now to kill one land, destroy one land, it costs four mana. I can remember when you could blow them all up for four mana. Um, you would rarely ever play with like five mana spells if people in your area were playing Armageddon's heavily. <laughs> Just a great card. Um, so Armageddon is probably going to be the first inclusion into um, a powered cube that I would cobble together uh, just because it does have a really high power level. Balance, see so you can go right from one high power level card to another. So balance, 
actually is interesting because for a long time people didn't think it was particularly good. Um, and it is, it goes down to be like being one of the more powerful cards in the game um, because it has multiple effects for two white mana. Um, so I'm going to read the Oracle text just because it's a little more laid out. Each player chooses a number of lands he or she controls equal to the number of lands controlled by the player who controls the fewest and sacrifices the rest. Each player discards cards and sacrifices creatures the same way. Um, Zarin Orb really managed to open that up, and the combination of balance, Zarin Orb, and land tax could let you get crazy um, because you could do all sorts of degenerative things with it. So balance definitely would go in. And yet another inclusion, no, I'm joking, Benelish Hero. So Benelish Hero is a cycle of one ones for one. Um, with abilities on them. Some of them are not good. This is particularly is not good. It has banding. So I'm going to read banding <clears throat> one time and then never read it again. Banding. Any creatures with banding and up to one without can attack in a band. Bands are blocked as a group. The creatures with banding you control are blocking or being blocked by a creature. You divide that creature's combat damage, not its controller, amongst any of the creatures it's being blocked by or is blocking. <sighs> um, so basically, it's kind of like a form of trample on the attack and then reverse trample on the block um, as it lets you assign the damage and split it up however you want. Um, so uh, definitely one of those keywords. Um, that it's good is it's gone um, it's just super confusing I mean a keyword that has to have like a two paragraph long explanation is not a good keyword <laughs> so all right so first cycle um, well the Ben Shero is a cycle across all the colors but one one for one aren't really a cycle they're just part of the game um, black word though is a cycle so white had five different wards they were enchant creatures and they all were one white mana Target creature gains protection from X. In this case, the black ward is protection from black. Um, so, um, Blaze of Glory. Um, it is an instant for one white mana. Again, Oracle text on this because that text is it's ridiculous. If I could read it very well, the fact that I have old tired eyes means that I can't really read it without squinting. So, um, Cast Blaze of Glory only during combat before blockers are declared. Target creature target defending player controls starting over target creature defending players control can block any numbers of creatures this turn it blocks each cre um, attacking creature this turn if able so I guess <laughs> you declare attacks blaze of glory your frag tusk can block every creature and it's going to block all of my creatures I mean it's really a I guess it's an effective form of removal, but like, it just feels odd. Like, you really just rather be getting damage through with like a lure effect or something. Um, so, okay, next up, Enchant Creature Blessing. Um, two white, target creature gains 1-1 one, one until end of turn. A rare again, all the way until M14. Not that it got printed all the way through. Um, it's a shame it got printed as an uncommon in M14. That's like, it feels super low power level, but not playable. Blue Ward um, is the part of the Ward cycle. Castle, um, on that, your untapped creatures gain plus zero, plus two, attacking creatures loses bonus. <laughs> it's basically, it's just been changed. Untapped creatures you control get plus zero, plus two. Very less confusing. Uh, so the next cycle and keeping in mind that an alpha no cop black um, is the circle protection cycle. Um, so it's just uh, pay one mana to prevent all damage from one source um, until end of turn. Um, so all five right there. Next up is consecrated land. Um, consecrated land. All enchantments on target lands are destroyed. Lands cannot be destroyed or further enchanted and the consecrated land has been destroyed. Basically, it just protects one land. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. I got excited about getting started. Um, beta came out in October of 1993, so a month and a half, two months later, and then Unlimited came out on the first of December of 1993.
So these first three printings, basically, they flew out. Um, Alpha sold out super quick, Beta sold out super quick, and each time they printed a larger amount and it got more spread, basically. Um, but it took until revised, really, for packs to sit around for a while. Um, I personally I was opening packs are revised in two, uh, 1996 and 97 looking for dual lands so they were still available years after they came out so okay, so first um hoser of the hoser cycle and there's hosers basically in every color is conversion um two white two colorless it's an enchantment all mounds are considered planes while conversion is in play pay two white during upkeep or conversion is discarded so it's got an upkeep effect um, Crusade, this is a mini cycle of two cards, two white, um, that, it is two white, well, I guess I've never noticed that, um, all white creatures get plus one, plus one, um, now, of course, they've stopped doing the, the effects that are for both players, um, so the same effect now would be white creatures you control, but back in the early days you had to take into account if you were playing a white opponent, white playing opponent, it was just going to be less effective. Um, next up, Death Word, regenerate target creature. White got regenerated at the beginning of the game. Um, it doesn't really get it anymore, so it's protection or indestructible now. Disenchant, this is a card I would love to see come back into standard. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, it's a part of modern, but in modern, I think it's a little limited. There's better options, but it definitely should still be around. White should get this effect back. Um, disenchant a colorless and a white. Destroy target artifact for enchantment. Um, you might notice target enchantment or artifact must be discarded. Um, very confusing wording. Again, game doesn't get really uniformed until much later on. I'm sorry if you can hear the car. My neighbor is leaving. And his truck is incredibly loud. Um, Firmstead. Target lands controller gains one life each upkeep if white white is spent. Target land still generates mana as usual. And yes, that is a rare. That is a rare. Do you want a mox or do you want a farmstead? I want a farmstead. Okay. Um, next up, green ward. Ward cycle for green. And after that, guardian angel. Um... White X. Prevent next X damage that would be dealt to target creature or player. Until end of turn, you may pay one anytime you can cast an instant. If you do, prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to creature or player this turn. So it prevents the damage up front and gives you kind of like a force field effect, so to speak. Um, so it's actually pretty interesting. They don't do instants very often. Um, that have a lasting effect until in a turn. Normally, it, the effect is just immediate, goes into the graveyard, and then you don't have to worry about keeping track of that. Uh, so, but I mean, it's not. It's an inter interesting card. I don't know how good it is. Um, I don't think I've ever played it. It was a common, and you might notice that the commons are fairly bad for the most part. Um, that's why they don't say see play too much in Popper. Um, so, Filling Solve, um, this is the first of the Boon Cycle, the 1 for 3 Cycle, probably the worst, um, and that's just, well, it's not good, um, but the other ones are just so much better, so, um, Filling Solve, um, 1 white mana, gain 3 life or prevent 3 damage from, uh, from being dealt to a single target, so creature or player, um, not much to say, I do like the art, um, always have liked the art. Next up, Holy Armor, another enchant creature. White was pretty heavy on the enchant creatures. I think black was too. Um, Holy Armor, one white. Target creature gains plus zero, plus two. And then has white. Target creature gets an extra plus zero, plus one until end of turn. So kind of like a reverse fire breathing with a typical white buff the toughness effect. Um, Holy Strength, this is a little mini cycle with Unholy Strength. Um, target creature gets plus one, plus two. Not bad. Um, Island Sanctuary, this is one of the cards that was just jammed in at the last minute, no testing. I'm going to read the Oracle text. I'm going to take a sip of a tasty beverage first. I will mute, enjoy a few moments of silence. Okay, so, Island Sanctuary. If you would draw a card, 
during your draw step. Instead, you may skip that draw. If you do until the end of your until your next turn, you can't be attacked um, by creatures with flying and except by creatures with flying and island walk. So basically, it shuts down the ground. Um, I don't know. Uh, Moat wasn't too far past this, and I think Moat is just some probably a card that immediately uh, took that out of contention because um, it just didn't. You didn't have to discard or skip your draw or anything. Karma, card I actually have some experience with because I played um, pretty heavily during the Necro Summer, Necro Winter time frame. And Karma, not the best option, but it was one that I could afford. <laughs> so I played them. Um, so Karma, two white, two colorless. For each swamp in play, Karma deals one damage to the swamp owner during the swamp owner's upkeep. Um, so basically it just dealt a lot of damage. And those are a lot of black decks, like 99.99% .99 of the time. So, um, Lance, another enchant creature from white. Target creature gains first strike. Um, Mesa Pegasus, um, a 1-1 one, one for two, a white and a colorless, and it has flying and banding. Um, Northern Paladin um, is white, white, and tap, destroys a black card in play. Um, it has additional lines of text, but black permanent. Um, and it's a 3 3 creature, so it looks like Bruce Campbell from the Army of Darkness movies. Or the Evil Dead movies. Okay. Uh, vanilla creature, 2 2 for 3. Pearl of Unicorn, carrying on. Personal Incarnation. Um, White had a lot of damage redirecting effects. Um, so. Um, so I'm going to read the oracle text on it because the non-oracle text, of course, is a mess. The next one damage that would be dealt to personal inc incarnation this turn is dealt to its owner instead. Any, may, any player may activate this ability, but only if he or she controls personal incarnation. When personal incarnation dies, its owner loses half of his or her life rounded up. Uh, yeah, so that doesn't seem all that great. I think there's a cycle of three colorless, three colored cards, too. Um, so I think this is the first one. Not good. Um, can, I cannot imagine opening a pack and having that as my rare. Um, laces. This is the first lace. Pure lace. And the lace cycle was a cycle of rares that I loathed because um, it went all the way to revised. Um, heck, they brought it back in 4th edition. Just not a good cycle. Target spell or permanent, it becomes white. All of that text boiled down. Mana symbols on that permanent remain unchanged. So it becomes a white card, but you still sp spend whatever casting, whatever activated abilities or anything with the same mana. Uh, red Ward, um, that's the Red Ward cycle. Red Ward of the cycle. Um, Resurrection. Um, white had a little bit of recursion, graveyard recursion in the beginning of the game. It's not around anymore. Um, two colorless, two white. Um, take a creature from your graveyard and put it in directly into play. You can't tap it until your next turn. I think it's going to return target creature grave from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a lot simpler now. Um, reverse damage. The next time a source of your choice will deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. You gain life equal to damage prevented this way. That's not bad. Not bad. I mean, that's a pretty decent rare. Um, righteousness, target defending creature gains plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. Not bad. I mean, in a combat heavy format, that would probably be pretty good. Um, so, uh, got reprinted until M10. So, um, I wasn't playing during M10. Somebody can tell me if that was combat heavy. Uh, Samite Hiller, tap to prevent one damage that we built, dealt to target creature or player this turn. I don't think we get effects like this very often um, anymore. Um, I don't think they were heavily played, and uh, but that's very white to me from starting way back in the day. Um, so Savannah Lions, um, I would probably put a Savannah Lion in a powered cube just to have uh, something to hold a sword or something. So Savannah Lands would go in. It's just the quintessential 2-1 one for 1. 
I'm surprised that's not called a lion, a T1 for one, because we call a bear a T2 for two, and all that. So. Um, Sarah Angel, 4-4 four, four flying, uh, for five mana, three and a white, or three and two white, um, and has vigilance, so it does not tap when attacking. Um, next card, Swords to Plowshares. Um, arguably the best uh, white removal in the entire game. Um, removing a creature from the game and that people might argue Path to Exile is better because of the life gain, but the reality of it is, is ramping your opponent into an extra land is often more detrimental than giving them extra life. So my vote would be Swords of Plowshares. I would run both in a Powered Cube if I had the room, though, but Swords would go in. Uh, veteran Bodyguard. Um, let's read the Oracle text. As long as Veteran Bodyguard is untapped, all damage that would be dealt to you by unblocked creatures is dealt to Veteran Bodyguard instead. What fart noise? Okay. Would you run four of these or four of those? Okay. You're going to run the swords. Okay. Wall of Swords, a 3 5 flying for four. It summoned wall. Now it would say summon defender, but there is no defender back in that point. Um, so when you saw a wall, you knew you couldn't attack with it. Uh, white knight, this is a part of a mini cycle with black knight. Um, two, so white, white. Protection from black for strike for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, white ward is the white ward of the cycle. And then the last white card is Wrath of God. All creatures in play are destroyed and cannot be regenerated for white, white, and two colorless. Um, so that, of course, would go in to a powered cube. I know there is Day of Judgment, but cannot be regenerated. I guess it's just a cherry on top of the the chili dog. Okay, so next up, um, we're going to move over to blue. Era Elemental. 4-4 uh, four, four flying for 5. Kind of the quintessential early blue creature. Um, Ancestral Recall. Part of the Power 9. Um, this is the blue um, boon. Um, it, it would say now target player draws three cards. Now uh, at the old warning, wording was draw three cards or force opponent to draw three cards. Um, so I guess if you were playing a heavy mill strategy, you could get them, but you're really not going to do that. So, okay, animate artifact. Blue had some interaction in odd ways with artifacts at the beginning of the game. Um, that aren't, it's just not really around anymore. Um, not like this. Um, as long as enchanted artifact isn't a creature, it's an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost. Uh, for four mana, it was an uncommon. That's not bad. Um, Blue Elemental Blast, the precursor to Hydro Blast. Um, it's part of the mini cycle, of course, with Red Elemental Blast. Choose one. Counter target red spell or destroy target red permanent. Um, Brain Geyser. Target player draws X cards. Clone. Um, Shapeshifter. Forecasting cost blue and three. It's a zero zero because it, it it may enter. You may have the clone. Sorry. You may have clone enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Um, so it was an uncommon to start out, but then Wizards caught on the fact that that's pretty, really pretty good and limited. Um, so, um, so is Control Magic, um, blue, blue, two colorless. You control Enchanted Creature. Um, so it's an uncommon, but it hasn't been around for a long time. In like a Corset 4th edition was the last time it was around. They just don't like to give blue that simple of control magic effects basically. Uh, copy artifact, kind of exactly what it sounds like. You may have copy artifact enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield except it's an enchantment in addition to its other types. And it's a colorless and a blue. Rare up until revised. Okay. Counter spell, counter target spell, blue blue. Um, so of course I think I would run counter spell even knowing there's like mana leak or um, 
Managerine, any of those others, um, because I would want probably three or four two casting cost counters. Um, once you get past two casting cost counters, it leaves a trick. It, it becomes trickier to leave that mana up um, to to have that ability in a cube. Um, so you really want to have a few of them available. So uh, creature bond. Um, this is the fact that black gets now for the most part. Um, when it, or not specifically this effect, but effects like it. Um, when enchanted creature dies, creature bond deals damage equal to that creature's toughness to the creature's controller. Uh, white and the blue. Um, Ansomatics are one of my favorite early artists. Um, drain power, um, blue blue. This is actually pretty interesting. I actually kind of like this one. Target player activates a mana ability for each land he or she controls. Then put all mana from that player's mana pool into yours. Um, it's a sorcery. So basically, a, on your turn, you cast it. If your opponent has untapped lands or anything, they tap them and you get their mana for that turn. So it's interesting. It's probably not great. Uh, feedback. Feedback deals, um, does one damage to controller of target enchantment during each upkeep. And what's in interesting about it is it's an enchant enchantment originally now it's just an enchantment aura so you basically just slap it on an enchantment um, flight um, there is a little cycle of enchantments that basically grant kind of like the marquee ability um, in a color and flight's one of them um, so for one blue target creature is now a flying creature no, I would just say it gains flying but um, invisibility. Target creature can only be blocked by walls. Be blocked only by walls uh, for two blue. Um, jump is the instant version of flight. Target creature is a flying creature to end of turn for one and blue. Okay, so blue is first poser um, for blue blue. Um, life cap. You gain one life for um, each time a forest of an opponent's becomes tapped. Um, so not great. Not great because they're tapping it for things that are going to deal a lot more damage normally. Um, next up, Lord of Atlantis, the first lord um, on a creature. Blue, blue, 2 2. All merfolk in play gain island walk and 1 1 while this card is in play. Um, of course, they've done an updated version that gives the ability only to merfolk you, you control. Okay. Magical hack. Beginning of the game, blue had a lot of abilities to change colors or names or <sighs> on cards. Not really relevant. I don't remember it ever working out well even back then. Um, so magical hack, blue instant rare. Um, change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one basic land time with another. For example, you may change Swamp Walk to Plane Walk. This effect lasts indefinitely. Forever. Um, so, not good. Um, Mahatamotni Dijin. Um, it is a 5 6 flying for four, uh, 4 and 2 blue. Um, that's it. That's all it does. Mana Short, the Pretty Rose. Um, so, it's an instant, 2 and a blue. Tap all lands target player controls and empty his or her mana pool. That would be fun to do at the beginning of somebody's upkeep. Um, I don't know how feasible it is because it only taps lands, but it's a pretty card. Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, 1-1 one, one for 1, no special ability. Uh, Phantasmal Forces is a 4-4 um, four, four flyer. The printing is really pour on this particular card. It's very faded. 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 of blue and 3. Um, and it has up, uh, upkeep of 1 blue. If you don't pay it, you sacrifice it. So. Um, Phantasmal Terrain. Blue Soul gets this effect occasionally. Um, 2 blue. Enchantment. Enchant a land. Um, as Phantasmal Terrain enters the battlefield, choose a basic land type, and choose a land, or Enchanted Land is the chosen type. Um, next up is Phantasmal, or Phantom Monster. Um, it is a 3-3 three, three flying for 3, or for 3 and a blue. 
nothing else to it. Pirate ship is a pinger um, with island home. And basically island home is um, it can't attack or block unless, or it can't attack unless the a defending player controls an island. And if you don't control any, any islands, you have to sacrifice it. Um, it was a very strange blue cycle, basically, where it, the creatures were dependent upon you having water for them to be in. Um, so it's a very strange flavor from the beginning of the game. But it's four and a blue for a four three, and it taps to all one damage to target creature or player. Um, so probably a fairly decent card in like a limited environment. Not that I think people draft it at this point. Next up, Power Leak is an enchant creature, or it's an enchant order. Um, at the beginning of the upkeep of an enchant, that's an enchant enchantment, wow. Um, at the beginning of the upkeep of the enchanted enchantments controller, that player may pay any amount of mana. Power Leak deals two damage to that player. Prevent X of that damage where X is the amount of mana that the player paid this way. That's a lot of work to deal damage. Um, Next up, Power Sync. Um, it's a counter, uh, blue X. Counter target spell unless its controller pays X. If he or she doesn't, that player taps all lands with mana abilities. He or she controls and empties his or her mana pool. So blue did have a fairly strong screw with your opponent's mana pool at the beginning of the game. So, um, next up, Prodigal Sorcerer, Tim. Um, one, one for three, two and a blue and tap to deal one damage to any target target creature or player next up um psionic blast um is a four or it's a instant two and a blue um psionic blast deals four damage to target creature or player and deals two two damage to you um that later became char which was on color um psionic blast is off color of course for what blue does now so next up is psychic venom um blue and a colorless, enchant land, whenever target land is tapped, um, psychic venom deals two damage to that land's controller. Next up is sea serpent, um, it's a 5-5 five, five for five and a blue, and it has island home. So, not anything spectacular, kind of a vanilla creature with a drawback, and at seven mana it didn't really need one. Um, Siren's Call, I'm going to read the oracle text. Not that it's shorter, it's just less confusing. Cast Iron's Call only during an opponent's turn before attackers are declared. Creatures the active player controls attack this turn if able. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy all non-wall non creatures that player controlled that didn't attack this turn. Ignore this effect for each creature the player didn't control continuously since the beginning of the turn. Ah, okay. Next up. Slide of mine. This is another blue changes the color thing. Um, change the text of target spell by replacing all instances of one color with another. For example, you may change target black spell to target blue spell. This spell this effect lasts indefinitely, forever. Right, next up, spell blast. Um, target spell is countered. X is the cost of the target spell. So pretty straightforward. Not bad. Stasis. Horrible card. Um, player skipped during tap steps at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice stasis unless you play blue. I mean, you could just deal a lot of damage. You could bounce it to get your untaps. And uh, the art. The art is wonderful. The art is just amazing. It's, I mean, just amazing. Okay. Still artifact. It's kind of like the balance to control magic only. You control enchanted artifact for two and a blue. Thought Lace is the blue part of the life cycle. Time Walk, of course, is part of the Power Nine as well. Um, so it's an in, uh, it's a sorcery. Take an extra turn after this one. Um, not too complicated or anything like that. Just effective. Um, in the early game, and the late game, if you're going to combo out, like just a super effective card. Time Twister, um, kind of the fringe card in the Power Nine, but still part of it. Um, Time Twister is a sorcery, two and a blue. Each player shuffles, shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her graveyard until 
Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library, then draws seven cards. Then Time Twister is put into its owner's graveyard. So, okay, and that um, Time Walk would go in. I probably want to do Time Twister. Um, I like cards and graveyards to mean something in Limited, um, in Cube. Um, so I don't really think that's a, it's not a super good effect. We'll have to see. Uh, Twiddle, um, this was something that was part of blue for a long time, but I don't think you see it this cheap anymore. Um, so Twiddle, blue, instant, um, you may tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. Um, unsummon, return target creature to its owner's hand for a blue. Um, Vesuvian Doppelganger, this is uh, kind of the mirror of clone. Quentin Hoover art, um, Quentin is no longer with us, um, so to speak, um, but he, he actually did the art for a lot of the earlier, like, base cards of magic, like, when you think of some of the really, like, early advertising art, um, Wrath of God, Zubian Doppelganger, he did, and I mean, that art is super nice, it's super intricate, um, it's just lovely, um, so, uh, it's basically a variant on the, on a clone, um, the only difference is um, it doesn't cover the copy of the creature's color, it remains blue. And at the beginning of the upkeep, you may have this creature become a copy of target creature, except it doesn't co copy the creature's color. If, if you do, it gains this ability. So basically, it's a clone that you can make a different color every turn. Uh, you can make a different creature every turn, it always remains blue, and it's three and two blue. Um, so for one extra mana, you get a lot more flexibility. And of course, you could always just pick the same creature every time. Um, so, um, volcanic interruption, eruption. Um, so another hoser, um, three blue and X. Um, destroy X target mountains. Volcanic eruption dulls damage to each creature and player equal to the number of mountains put in, in into a graveyard this way. Um, and it's a sorcery, so um, that's a lot of work to dull some damage. Uh, wall of air. Um, it's a 1-5 flying wall for two blue and a colorless. And then wall of water is a 0-5 wall for two and a, or two blue and a colorless, but it has fire breathing, so blue to gain plus one plus zero until end of turn. So, um, and blue kind of gets that effect still, but it's normally plus one minus one, um, now. Uh, and then the last blue card is Water Elemental, um, which is a 5-4 vanilla creature for uh, three colorless and two blue. So, okay, and that's the end of blue. So we're going to head over to black. But before that, I'm going to take a moment, and I'll be right back. Okay, so back. So the next card is Animate Dead. Um, so Animate Dead, I believe, is actually a really effective um, graveyard recursion card, so I would put Animate Dead into a cube. Um, so, I'm going to read the oracle text, because it's just, it's less confusing, it's not less wordy. Um, so, enchant, enchant creature card in a graveyard. When Animate Dead enters the battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses enchant creature card in the graveyard, and gains enchant creature, en enchant creature put onto the battlefield with Animate Dead. Return Enchanted Creature card to the battlefield under your control and enchant. Attach Animate Dead to it. When Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller sacrifices it. Enchanted Creature gets a minus one, minus zero. Super effective though. I mean, two casting costs, it's a colorless and a black. Um, it just works really well. Um, so, uh, Bad Moon. Um, Colorless and a black, all black creatures in play get one one, plus one plus one. So it's weird that it is a black and a colorless while Crusade is too white, um, but maybe they just thought Crusade being too white is more flavorful. Um, black Knight is part of the cycle with White Knight, 2-2 two, two protection from white first strike. Um, Bograth is a 3-3 three, three for 4, we call that a hill giant most of the time. Um, and it has Swamp Walk, so it's actually a hill giant with an upside. Not super great, though. Um, contract from below. Um, 
this was one of the ones that they just jammed in without testing because they want to get the art out there. With that sweet art, I can understand why. Um, so, black. Um, I'm going to read the oracle text. Remove contract from below from your deck before playing if you're not playing for anti. Discard your hand, anti the top card of your library, and draw seven cards. Uh, so, anti, of course, was the gambling that was built into the early part of Magic. Um, I never personally played for Ansi because my cards were hard fought for most of the time. Um, but it just involved both players putting the top card of their library aside. And then whoever won the game won that card. Won, basically, they won both cards, but they won their opponent's card and got their card back. Um, and their black had a lot of cards that influence Ansi um, in these early sets. And really, Ansi was around, I think, until Ice Age. Um, so we'll probably run into it every now and again um, across a few different colors. Uh, Curse Land, this is kind of really flavorful for black. Um, Curse Land does one damage to target lands controller during each upkeep. So um, two and two black, not super. Um, Dark Witch R Ritual, the black boon. Um, one black, add three black mana to your mana pool. I think now it's a mana source that wasn't interrupt. No, it's just an instant. They got rid of mana sources. That whole mess was confusing, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, Dark Pact is another anti-card. I'm going to read the Oracle text because that's insane to me. Three black sorcery. Um, remove a Dark Pact from your deck before playing if you're not playing for anti. You want target card in the anti and exchange that card with the top card of your library. So basically, I'll let you steal one of the anti cards zero influence over the game mind you okay so the next page yay we're not even halfway through folks 292 cards wait until we get to fifth edition it's something it, it was huge it was something like 500 cards or something um, which is just ridiculous but death grip is a uh, black hoser um so for two black um and then two black to activate destroy a green spell as it is being cast so target counter target green spell um, Black doesn't get to do stuff like that anymore, and rightfully so. Um, but I like the art. It's the like the evil hand squeezing the heart. So, uh, Death Lace um, is the Black Lace. Uh, Demonic Attorney. Um, so it is two black and a colorless for a sorcery. It is another anti-card. And each player anties the top card of his or her library. So it lets you add cards to ante so you can win or lose even more. So, uh, Demonic Horde, it's 5-5, five, five, and this is part of the cycle. It was like a mini cycle or uh, a full cycle. I don't think there's a blue one, um, but I know there's a white one, there's a black one, there's a green one, um, where it's three and three of the colors, so three and three black. Um, and then it's tap to destroy one land, so tap to destroy target land. Um, play three black during upkeep, or the hordes become tapped, and you lose a land um, of your opponent's choice. Um, so, it's actually, um, I remember this seeing play in my area, um, just because it's a reusable source of land destruction. Land destruction was definitely a theme in a lot of early decks. Um, people didn't really catch on in my area, at least until Stronghold. Um, that 20 lands didn't really get the job done a lot of the time, so you had to play more to not miss your land drops or get punished by, by destruction. So Next up, Demonic Tutor. Um, so this would be in a cube, a power cube of mine. Um, two, or a black and a colorless. Um, you may search your library for one card, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. Um, so it would go in, not that Tutor effects are super strong and limited, but the fact that it's like effective two casting costs tutor effect lets you basically double a bomb in your deck. Um, so, uh, Train Life, um, it is black colorless X. Um, you can only spend black man on X, and Drain Life deals X damage to target creature or player. You gain life equal to the damage dealt, but not more life than the player's total before Drain Life dealt damage or the cheat creature's toughness. Um, so very limited. There's better versions of that card out there at this point. Um, Dredge Skeletons. 
one one for uh, black and a colorless and black to regenerate. Uh, evil presence one black enchant land target land is now a swamp. Uh, fear the enchant part of the enchantment cycle that gives like the marquee ability. Even though there's no cards in these sets with fear or the fear ability, fear came from the enchantment. So. Um, target creature cannot be blocked by any creatures other than artifact creatures or black creatures. So, two black. Uh, Frozen Shade is a 0 1 uh, for black and two colorless, and it has black to pump one plus one plus one. Um, Gloom, this was a popular sideboard card during Necro Summer for the Necro decks. Um, so, two and a black. White spells cost three more mana to cast. And Circle of Protections cost three more mana to use since they often ran Wastelands and Strip Mines and Sinkholes. They could shut a white deck pretty much completely out. So, um, Hal from Beyond. Um, Black doesn't get this ability anymore. It's a red ability now um, when it's around. Um, Black and X. Target creature gains plus X plus zero until end of turn. And it's a sorcery. Or it's an instant. Wow, you can actually. That's not bad. I mean, at instant speed, it's not bad. I don't remember it being an instant. Um, but uh, to be completely up front, um, this was fairly early uh, playing against cards like this in my magic career um, when I did see him. So I probably would not have recognized that I could play it on my opponent's turn. <laughs> so, um, Hippie, Hypnotic Spectre, um, Black Black Colorless, 2 2 Flying. And whenever it hits your opponent, they discard a card at random. Um, so that, plus Dark Ritual, was a pretty devastating early first turn play. Um, I don't think Hippie is strong enough for Q, though. No, probably not. I mean, you really wanted to be doing way more powerful stuff at 3 mana in black. That would be another one that I would circle back to. Um, so... Next up is Lich, um, for black, and it's an enchantment, not a creature, even though the art would lead you to believe that it is a creature. So I'm going to read the oracle text. Um, so as Lich enters the battlefield, you lose, you, lose, you lose life equal to your life total. So it takes all your life. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life. If you would gain life, draw that many cards instead. Whenever you're dealt damage, sacrifice that many non-token permanents. If you can't, you lose the game. And when Lich is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you lose the game. So, yeah. Um, Lord of the Pit, uh, four black, black, black. Flying Trample, seven, seven. And then you must sacrifice one of your own creatures during upkeep or Lord of the Pit deals damage, seven damage to you. You may still attack with Lord of the Pit even if you fail to sacrifice a creature. Yeah. Uh, Mind Twist. Um, so, I think I would put Mind Twist in, just with the understanding that I could always take it back out. Uh, but it is a super powerful effect now that costs multiple colorless and such to have it. But it's black and X, and opponent must discard X cards at random from their hand. If opponent doesn't have enough cards to discard, the entire hand is discarded. Get rid of that whole hand. And with Dark Rituals and such, it's a super powerful card. Um, Nether Shadow, pretty unique. Black Black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, I'm going to skip over to the Oracle text on it because it's probably better explained. At the beginning of your upkeep of Nether Shadow as you're in your graveyard with three or more creatures up, cards above it, you may put Nether Shadow onto the battlefield. It has haste. So it comes back and attacks immediately. Um, Nettling Imp is kind of unique to Black. It doesn't get this effect at all anymore, and I think this is one of the few instances of it. So for two in the black, you get a one in creature. Imp. Um, choose target non-wall creature that active player has controlled continuously since the beginning of the turn. Um, that creature attacks this turn if able. If it doesn't, destroy it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate this ability only during an opponent's turn before attackers are declared. So probably why it doesn't get it very much or anymore. Because it's not all that great. Nightmare, still around. Um... Five and a colorless flying creature, and its power and toughness are equal to the swamps you have in control. Uh, Paralyze, um, 
this is not a black effect anymore um, either. So black, when it paralyzed enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature does not does not untap during its controller's untap step. And at the beginning of the upkeep of enchanted creature's controller, that player may pay four. If he or she doesn't untap that, uh, does untap that creature. So um, kind of removal, but super slow and it can be worked around. But if you're playing like an aggressive black deck, your opponent probably doesn't have a chance to. Uh, Pestilence, uh, it's an enchantment to, to black. Um, do one damage to each creature and player. And Pestilence is discarded when there's no creatures left in play. Or sacrificed, I said discarded. The set review has already warped my mind. Okay. Plague Rats, uh, two and a black for an XX. And uh, Plague Rats, power and toughness are equal to the number of Plague Rats in play. Um, raise Dead um, is a Raise Dead effect, um, so still kind of around now. I return a uh, creature from your graveyard to your hand for one black. Uh, Royal Assassin um, takes me all the way back to when I first started playing because I had a friend who loved Royal Assassin. I can never figure out how to get around Royal Assassin. Um, and it's it's a colorless and two black for a 1-1 one -one creature, so it should have definitely been very apparent how to get rid of Royal Assassin. Uh, but it just baffled me. Um, I can never tap my creatures. I had to play with Sarah Angels. Okay, tap to destroy any tapped creature. So pretty elegant design uh, for the early days of Magic. And I think Royal Assassin, it's been around. I mean, it was around as late as M12. And of course, rare all the way through. You don't want multiple copies of that in your draft pool. No, you don't. Uh, sacrifice, not a good card. Black, instant. As an additional cost of sacrifice, sacrifice a creature. It's very flavorful, at least. Um, and add to your mana pool an amount of black mana equal to the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. So you're going to pay for a creature and then turn it into black mana. That doesn't seem like that's a winning situation. Skate Zombies, 2-2 two, two for 2 and a black. Vanilla. And then Scavenging Ghoul is a 2-2 two, two for 3 and a black, but um, it has a, an ability. So at the beginning of each end step, put a Corpse Counter on Scavenging Ghoul for each creature that died this turn. And then you can remove a Corpse Counter from Scavenging Ghoul to regenerate Scavenging Ghoul. So, pretty good. I mean, not great, but, I mean, a lot of these black creatures are pretty bad. So, um, Singer of Vampires, 4-4 uh, Flying... For two and a uh, sorry, two black and three colorless, um, and that's pretty much all it really ever says. But it does have the extra a little ability on the card that whenever a creature that Singer Vampire or, yeah Singer Vampire dealt damage who dies this turn, Singer Vampire gets a one one counter. Um, so if it blocks or is blocked by a one one and it dies, it gets stronger like a vampire would. Um, so Ansomatics are all the other art on Singer Vampires is inferior to this art. I mean, it's great. It's a vampire tap in a vein. So, um, Simulacrium is next. Um, it is an instant for a black and a colorless. You gain life equal to damage dealt to you this turn. Simulacrium deals damage to target creature. You control equal to the damage dealt to you this turn. So basically, it just takes damage away from you and puts it on the creature. So... Sinkhole, this is a common. I'm pretty sure these are like a whole bunch of money. Two black, destroy target land. Crazy. Should never have been a common. Okay, Terror. Good black removal. Um, black and a colorless. Destroy target creature. Cannot be regenerated. It probably says destroy target non black, non artifact creature. That creature cannot be regenerated. Yeah. Common. Um, on Holy Strength, um, the cycle with Holy Strength, target your creature gains plus two plus one and for one black. And we're almost to the end of black, so we can move over to blue. Wall of Bones is a one four wall. These early printed cards are sometimes really hard to see. Yeah. And um, it has black regenerate target or regenerate wall of bones. Uh, warp Artifact. 
black had a really limited amount of artifact interaction all the way through antiquities, I believe, maybe a little bit later. Um, so two black, or black black, um, at the beginning of an upkeep of enchanted artifacts controller, warp artifact deals one damage to that player. Pretty worthless. Uh, weakness, one black enchant creature, target creature loses minus one, minus two. At this, basically, target creature gets minus two, minus one. So it's kind of a farmer removal. So, Will of the Wisp is a 0 1 flying for 1 black, and it has black regenerates. Uh, word of Command. <sighs> Let's see what it says on the Oracle text. Okay, so it's black, black. Ah, it's crazy. Um, to sum it up, it's like a Mind Slaver effect for 1 card for 1 turn. Um, so I'm going to read it, and then we'll all scratch our heads, and then go on to the next card. So, look at target opponent's hand and choose a card from it. You control that player until Word of Command finishes resolving. The player plays that card if able. While doing so, the player can activate mana abilities only if they're from lands here she controls, and only if mana they produce is spent to activate other mana abilities of lands here she controls and or play that card. If the chosen card is cast as a spell you control the player while that spell is resolving. And it's an instant, so you could do it on their turn. So you could do, you could make them Armageddon or something like that when they don't want to. So, yeah. So like a Mind Slaver effect, but for one card. So, uh, Zombie Master is the Black Lord. I love Zombie Master. I was a big zombie player back in my, or my youth when I was a young man. Um, so it is a 2-3 for two black and a colorless. And other zombie creatures have Swamp Walk and they gain black to regenerate. Um, so of course it doesn't pop power and toughness because dead things don't need power, they have numbers. Okay, next up we're gonna move over to red. So red, first off, um, red, uh, first card is Burrowing. For a red, it's an enchantment. Target creature gains a mountain walk. Next up is Chaos Lace. It's the red lace. Um, after that is Disintegrate. It's uh, red X, and it deals damage to target creature or player. And then if a, creature's, um, a creature can't be regenerated um, this turn, and if the creature would die, it excels, it, excels it instead. It's pretty decent. Um, a lot of things going on now that would it would still let the creature regenerate it may exile it but it wouldn't be able to hit a player um, so uh, dragon whelp um, I love dragon whelp just for the flavor um, so it's a two three flying yeah for two red and two colorless and it has fire breathing so one red to gain plus one plus zero but if you spend that ability more than three times so four five six um, at the beginning of the next end step you sacrifice dragon whelp so you can pump it as much as you want but you are going to blow it up uh, so it's just fun um, next is dwarven uh, demolition team um, so it's a one one for a red and two colorless and you tap to destroy target wall so Flavorful for dwarves, but not great. Next up is Dwarven Warriors, a 1 1 for 2 and a color, or a red and 2 colorless, and tap to make target creature with power 2 or less unblockable until end of turn, and that's, that's all it would say now. Okay, Earth Elemental, 2 red, 3 colorless, 4 or 5 vanilla creature. Earthbind. Um, it's an enchant flying creature, or now I would say enchant creature. Um, with, when Earthbind enters the battlefield, and if an enchant creature has flying, Earthbind deals 2 damage to that creature, and Earthbind gains enchanted creature and loses flying. Earthquake, another red X spell, red X, dull, does X damage to each player and each non flying creature in play. Uh, false Orders is interesting. Uh, false orders can only be 
um, cast false orders only during declare blocker step. Remove target defending. Remove target creature defending player controls from combat. Creatures that was blocking that had become blocked by only that creature this combat become unblocked. You may have it blocked attacking creature of your choice. So you can basically you can change blocks on it, and that's why. But changing blocks, I don't really know how you're going to get an opponent um, without switching another creature into that spot, and I don't think you can when you can resolve that spell, so it's not all that great. Fire Elemental is the flip side to Earth Elemental. It's a 5 4 for 2 red and 3 colorless. Okay, so next up is Fireball, and it's kind of the quintessential red X spell. Um, the one thing about Fireball is it does hit creatures and players, and you can split the targets basically for each additional target. You pay one additional mana, and that lets you split up the damage. Um, so, Fireball is actually pretty decent. The Fire Breathing is the ability of the same name attached to an enchantment, um, so not great. Um, flash Fire, um, a Hoser, um, all planes and uh, player destroyed uh, for red and three colorless. Fork, I'll read Fork. Um, copy target instant or sources spell, except that copy is red. You may choose new targets for the copy for black or uh, red red. Goblin Balloon Brigade, um, we had talked about this earlier. So red, one one. Goblins gain flying until end of turn. Controller may not choose to make goblins fly after they have been blocked. Uh, so it gives all goblins flying for one red. That printing. So, um, goblin kings. Uh, goblin king. Um, it's a 2-2 two, two, uh, for two red and a colorless. Goblins in play gain mountain walk and plus one plus one while goblin king is in play. Um, granite gargoyle is a 2-2 two, two for red and two and it has reverse fire breathing so it's flying and a red and it gets plus zero plus one until end of turn great ogre is a two two for red and two hill giant is a three three vanilla creature for red and three and her learn minotaur is a two three creature for two red and a colorless another vanilla creature and then Iron Claw Orcs is fairly vanilla. It's a 2 2 for red and a colorless. It cannot be used to block any creature with power more than one, so it's afraid of anything bigger than it is. Kelvin Warlord um, it's a 0 0 creature. And it's kind of unique in the fact that Kelvin Warlord's power and toughness are equal, um, are each equal to the number of non wall creatures you control. So while it counts all creatures, it doesn't count wall creatures. So, very strange. All right, so the first red card I would include into the cube is the one, the only, Lightning Bolts. Um, so the red boon, um, three damage to target a creature or a player for one red. Um, next up, Mana, fl uh, mana Flare. Not a red ability any longer. It, it's green now. Um, red and two whenever a player taps land for mana that land produces one additional mana so pretty good i love the mana flare i didn't i didn't like i didn't care that it was for both players <laughs> i just played them uh, mana barbs is kind of the answer to mana flare so for three and a red whenever a land is tapped mana barbs stalls one damage to that land's controller red had a lot of this passive effects at the beginning of the game. Mons Goblin Raiders, red, 1-1 one, one vanilla. Orcish Artillery is 1-3 for red, red, and white. Orcish Artillery deals 2 damage to target creature or player, and 3 damage to you. Um, so definitely very flavorable for red. Orcish Burflame, um, 3 and a red. When attacking all of your attacking creatures get plus 1, plus 0. Um, power Surge is red red. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Surge deals X damage to that player where X is the number of untapped lands here. She controls at the beginning of this turn. Um, so don't leave anything untapped. Raging River. I'm going to read the oracle text on this one. Red red. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, each defending player divides all creatures without flying. He or she controls into a left pile and a right pile. 
Then for each attacking creature you control, choose left or right. That creature can't be blocked this combat, except by creatures with flying and creatures in the pile with the chosen label. So you have to split your creatures up to get to block. Well, red elemental blast is the copy, the cycle with blue elemental blast. Rock of Cure Ridge is a 3 3 flying for a red and three colorless. Rock Hydra is red, red, and X for a creature. And it enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters on it. For each one damage that would be dealt to Rock Hydra, if it has a 1 1 counter on it, remove a 1 1 counter from it and prevent that one damage. And then it has red, prevent the next one damage that we dealt to Rock Hydra this turn. And then it has red, 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 put a 1 1 counter on Rock Hydra, activate this ability only during your upkeep. Um, a lot of those counters were referred to as head counters, uh, but since wizards like stand, standardized counters, it doesn't get, they don't get to be head counters anymore. Sedge Troll, uh, another one of the cards that weren't tested. This one's probably like fully broken, most successful, kind of right there in the middle. 2-2 two, two for a red and two colorless, and it has black to regenerate, and then the Sedge Troll gets one plus one plus one if its controller controls a swamp. Um, Shatter, destroy target artifact for red and a colorless. Shivan Dragon, 5-5 um, five, five flying for red, red, blue, or red, red, four colorless, sorry. Um, and it has fire breathing, so red to gain plus one plus zero. Um, smoke is an enchantment, red red. Each player can only untap one creature during his or her untap phase. Red doesn't get to do that anymore. Um, it's more of a white ability now. Um, stone giant is two red red. I'm going to read the oracle text. Um, tap target creature you control with toughness less than stone giant's Power gains flying until end of turn. Destroy that creature at the beginning of the next hand step. So basically, the stone giant throws it, and then it dies. So, but it deals damage probably. Stone rain, red to destroy target land, um, and then tunnel, red destroy one wall. Target walls cannot be regenerated. So, um, two headed giant of Farius. A lot of these names came from. Dungeons and Dragons games that the designers did. Um, so that's probably somebody's character or a villain or something that they fought. Um, so for red and four, um, it's a four four. And then two headed giant of Furious can block an additional creature. And it has trap. So. Um, a then troll is a two two for red and two. And it has red regenerates. I like the art on that a whole bunch too got a big nose. Okay, Wall of Fire. It's um, a fire breathing wall, 0 5 for red, red, and a colorless. And then Wall of Stone is a 0 8 wall with no abilities in Spinola um, for red, red, and one colorless. And the last red card is Wall of Fortune. So we're going to say we would put that in the cube. Um, it's red and two colorless. Both players discard their cards and draw seven additional cards. Discard their hands and draw seven additional cards. Okay, next up, going over to green, Aspect of Wolf. Um, enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus X plus Y, where X is the half the number of forests you control rounded down, and Y is half the number of forests you control rounded up. Has attacking and blocking involved on the printed, but they removed all that and just did it as a flat um, gain. So it's just a little bit easier, but it's still really complicated for what it does. So uh, Berserk, one green, instant, cast Berserk only before the combat damage step. Um, target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus zero until in a turn where X is its power. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy that creature if it attacked this turn. So it goes crazy and then dies. Birds of Paradise, 0 1 flying for green, and it taps to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Pretty birds. Mana birds. Like a lightning rat. Camouflage. Uh, okay. Green, colorless. Cast Camouflage only during your declare attacker step. This turn, instead of declaring blockers, each defending player chooses any number of creature he or she controls and divides them into an equal number of pals. 
equal to the number of attacking creatures for whom that player is defending for whom that player is the defending player. Creatures he or she controls that can block additional creatures may likewise be put into additional piles. Assign each pile to a different one of those attacking creatures at random. Each creature in that pile can block that creature that pile is assigned to do so. Piles can be empty. Uh, so confusing and probably not worth playing. Channel, red, red until end, or green, green. Sorry, until in a turn, any time you could play and act, you could activate a mana ability, you may pay one life if you do add one colorless to your mana pool. So the infamous channel fireball combo. Okay, cockatrice. Um, green, green, three colorless, and. It's a 2-4 flying, and basically whenever Cockatrice blocks or becomes blocked by a non-wall creature, destroy that creature at the end of combat. Kind of like an earlier version of Death Touch. Okay, Crawlworm, Vanilla, it's a 6-4 for 2 green and 4 colorless. Elvish Archers, 2-1 first strike for a green and a colorless. Uh, Fast Bond, uh, I'm going to read the updated version. So green for an enchantment. You may pay any number of lands on each of your turn. Whenever you play a land, if it wasn't the first land you played this turn, Fast Bond deals one damage to you. An engine card and a lot of broken legacy decks. Vintage decks, that type of junk. Fog, prevent all da combat damage dealt this turn. For one green. Force of Nature, two colorless for green. Um, trample for an 8 eight, and then at the beginning of each upkeep, you pay four green, um, or it deals eight damage to you, and you can still attack. Uh, Fungusaur, two two, um, for green and three, and then each time fung Fungusaur is damaged but not destroyed, or it's still damaged but not destroyed, you put a one one counter on it. Um, Guy's Liege. As long as Guy's Liege isn't attacking, its power and toughness are equal to, to the number of forests you control. As long as Gaia's Liege is attacking, its power and toughness are equal to the number of forest defending player it controls. And then you can tap it to make a target land become a forest. That's a rare. And I feel like it's unplayable. Uh, the Green Boon, uh, Giant Growth, green target creature gains 3-3. Three, three. It's all on your turn. Plus 3, plus 3. Giant Spider, um, one of the most reprinted cards up until a certain point and then it Blizzard decided they didn't want to print it anymore and 15 is when it stopped. It is three colorless, one green, two four with reach, can block creatures with flying. And then Grizzly Bear is the quintessential bear. Two two green colorless. Boom vanilla hurricane is the flying earthquake, so it's a part of that cycle. Um Green X, all players and flying creatures suffer X, X damage. So worded differently than Earthquake. Just insane. Um, Ice Storm is green land destruction. It's stone rain for green, basically. Green to colorless, destroy any one land. Um, Instill Energy is an odd ball card. Um, so it's one green enchantment. Enchanted creature can attack as though it had haste. And you can pay zero. To untap enchanted creature, activate this ability only during your turn and only one once each turn. Uh, so it gets to one additional untap, basically. Um, that's pretty fun on a, like a Birds to Paradise or something. Um, I can't even read the name of this. Ironwood Root Tree Folk. Um, green, four colorless for a 3-5 vanilla tree. Um, Kudzu is fun. Um... It's also full of nutrients, so if you have kudzu, feel free to eat it. Um, it is two green and a colorless. Um, when enchanted land becomes tapped, destroy it. That land's controller attacks its kudzu to a land of his or her choice. So the kudzu always spreads. Um, Ladrids is a 1-1 one, one for green and two colorless. Um, you tap the Ladrids to untap a land of your choice. This action can be played as an interrupt. So tap to untap target land. Um, Life Force is a green hoser, green green, and then green green destroy target black spell it's, it's being cast, so counter target black spell. Um, Life Lace is the green lace, 
living artifact is green for an enchantment. Um, you enchant an artifact. Whenever you're dealt damage, put that many vitality counters on living artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may re remove a vitality counter from living artifact if you do gain one life. So not great. Okay, living lands are being fascinated by this card as well. Um, so it's green and three colorless. It's an enchantment, and all forests are 1-1 one, one creatures that are still land. So all forests are a lot easier to kill. Um, land or elves, 1-1 one, one for a green. Tap to add green mana to your mana pool. Um, lure, um, green, green, and a colorless enchant creature. All creatures able to block enchanted creatures must do so. Um, natural selection, another kind of oddball green card. Um, look at the top three cards of target player's library and put them back in any order. You may have that player shuffle his or her library. It's an instant, um, so very strange. Uh, regeneration, green and a colorless target creature gains regeneration. <laughs> target creature regenerates. Regrowth, green and a colorless return any card from your graveyard to your hand. I would put that in. You, just because it's elegant, it's simple. Um, skip sprites, 1-1 one, one flying for 1 green. Um, I always have a hard time pronouncing this one. Shadow Den Dryads. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green with Forest Walk. Um, stream of Life. Target player gains X life. It's green and X. Thicket Basculus is like Cockatrice but without flying. It's 2 green and 3 colorless. And a 2-4, and then whenever it's blocked or becomes blocked by anything but a wall, that creature dies at the end of combat. Timberwolves is Benelish Knight, but for green, it's a 1-1 one, one for green with banding. Um, Tranquility is 2 colorless and a green. All enchantments in play must be discarded. Uh, Tsunami is another green hoser, 3 colorless and a green. All islands in play are destroyed. Um, Vidurian Enchantress is two green and a colorless. Um, and basically it states that whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. It's a 0-2 creature. Uh, almost done with green. Wall of Brambles, two colorless and a green. And it's a 2-3 wall and green to regenerate. Wall of Ice, two colorless and a green. And it's a 0-7. Wall of Wood is a green for a 0-3 wall. Wanderlust. Um, is a two colorless and a green for an enchantment, enchant creature, enchantment aura. Um, more or less deals one damage to target creature, controller during upkeep. So you enchant a creature and it hurts your opponent. Uh, War Mammoth is just a 3-3 three, three, um, trample creature for green and three colorless. Web is an enchant creature for green. Target creature gains plus zero, plus two, and can now block creatures with flying, so it, it gives it reach. And Walgrith is the last green card. When tapped, target land provides one green mana in addition to the mana it normally produces. So, okay, and that's the last green card. I'm sorry if you hear my son in the background. He must have been doing something obnoxious, so my wife probably made him stop. We're close to bedtime, but I'm also close to the end. Um, only artifacts and lands left, so we're going to trek on through. Um, so Ankh of Nishira is two casting costs um, for a continuous artifact, so it doesn't tap. Um, they would just say artifact now. Um, and Ankh of Nishira deals two damage to anyone who puts a new land in play. Next up is Badlands. Um, it's part of the dual land cycle, um, and it's the red-black dual land. Um, Basalt Monolith, powerful card even now, um, three to cast, tap to add three colorless mana to your mana pool, it does not untap during your untap phase, you can spend three to untap it, um, so good ramp. Um, Bayou is next, it is the green black duel, black lotus, of course the dual lands um, would all go in. Black Lotus would go in, of course. So Black Lotus, zero to cast, sacrifice, add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. 
um, black vice, one casting cost, and um, choose an opponent at the beginning of the chosen opponent's upkeep. Um, black vice stills X damage to that player where X is the number of cards in his hand, his or her hand minus four. So anything over four. Um, next up is Celestial Prism. So three to cast, two provides one mana of any color. So, oh, and it's two to actually do have to tap it. So two and tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it's still like the worst filtering effect ever. Um, Chaos Orb is next. So two mana and one and tap. The Chaos Orb is on the battlefield. Play Chaos Orb onto the battlefield from a height of at least a one foot. If Chaos Orb turns over completely at least once during the flip, destroy all non-token permanents it touches, then destroy Chaos Orb. Horrible. I mean, they got rid of the physical dexterity cards for a reason. They're not fair um, for a lot of people. Um, Chaos Orb is always going to be one of those cards that people either love or hate. And, I mean, the guys that I played with that played them, um, they could always hit like a whole bunch of lands, so you had to adapt, and I always hated it, but I mean, I look back on it fondly. Um, Clockwork Beast, uh, six casting costs for a zero four, and it enters the battlefield with seven one one, or seven plus one plus zero counters on it, so it's really a seven four. Um, and at the end of the combat, if it, if it attacked or blocked, you remove a plus one plus zero counter from it, and you can tap. X and tap it to add plus zero plus one counters up to seven. It can never be above seven, so it can never be larger than a seven four, but it can go all the way back down to being a zero four. So um, next up is Conservator. So four to cast, three and then tap, prevent the loss of up to two life. Copper Tablet, two. And Copper Tablet deals one damage to each player during his or her upkeep. Crystal Rod is the first of the Magic Charm or Lucky Charm cycle. I'm going to read this one and then refer back. Um, so one to cast, and then one any blue... Uh, it's worded weird. Whenever a player casts a blue spell, you may gain one if you do gain one life. Not playable, really ever. Um, Cyclopean Tomb is kind of an oddball. Um, so it's four mana, and then two and tap. Put a Meyer counter on target non-swamp land. That land is a swamp for as long as it has a Meyer counter on it. Activate this only, ability only during your upkeep. Whenever Cyclopean Tomb was put into the graveyard from the battlefield at the beginning of each of your upkeeps for the rest of the game, remo remove a Meyer counter from land that has a Meyer counter put onto it with, from Cyclopean Tomb. But but that in my air counter has not been removed from what Cyclopean Tomb. So you make lands into swamps, and then when it dies, those lands stop being swamps one at a time. Um, Dingus Egg, uh, forecasting cost. Whenever anyone loses a land, Dingus Egg deals two damage to that player. So that in combination with like land destruction um, was a win condition. Um, Disrupting Spectre, or Scepter, um, three casting cost. Um, three and tap, opponent, um, target opponent discards a card, um, and you can only do that during your, as a sorcery. So you can't, can't get your opponent after they draw on an empty hand. Uh, force fill three to cast, and then um, you pay one. The next time an unblocked creature of your choice will dull combat damage to you this turn, prevent all but one of that damage. Um, Gauntlet of Might, for casting costs, all red creatures gain plus one plus one, and all mountains provide an extra red mana. Glasses of Urza, one to cast. You may look at opponent's hand. Helm of Chatzuk, and it's one in tap, and target creature gains banding until the end of turn. Awesome art for such a poopy effect. Howling Mind. Two casting costs. Each player draws one extra card during his or her draw step. I see manipulator. Uh, for casting cost, um, you may tap tar any land, creature, or artifact um, in play on either side. So it's just one to tap target, creature, artifact, or land. 
Illusionary Mask. This is the predecessor to Morph. Um, so it's two to cast, um, and it's X. You may choose a creature card in your hand whose mana cost can be, can be paid by some amount or all of the mana you spend on X. If you do, you may cast that creature card face down as a two creature spell without paying its mana cost. As that creature that spell, as the creature that spell becomes as it resolves has not been turned face up and would assign or deal damage beat all damage or become tapped and instead it's turned face up and assigns your old da dealt damage is dealt damage or becomes tapped. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. Ugh, hot mess. Um, Iron Star is the lucky charm for red. Uh, I recover is lucky charm for white. Jade Monolith is four to cast when to activate. You may take damage done to any creature instead of your creature basically um, so you can just redirect damage to you jade statue for to cast two to activate jade statue becomes a creature for the duration of the current attack exchange um, can be creature only during attack or defense and it's a three six so you can only do it during attack phase but i mean having an instant blocker is pretty good uh, jade day tome for to cast four and tap you may draw one extra card juggernaut Four to cast, it's a 5-3, and must attack each turn as possible, and it can't be blocked by walls. Um, Karma Bell, Karma's Bell is four casting costs. Treat all swamps in play as 1-1 one -one creatures, and of course that means that they are much easier to kill. Library of Bling, one casting cost. Um, there's no, you have no maximum hand size, and if it, an effect causes you to discard a card, discard it, but you may put it on top of your library instead of into your graveyard. Um, Living Wall, it's a four casting cost wall. Um, it's a zero six, and you can pay one to regenerate it. Awesome art. Um, Mana Vault, another card that would go into a powered cube, I believe. Um, it's one to cast, and you tap to add three mana to your mana pool. Doesn't untap during an untap step. Um, you can pay four to untap it on your upkeep, and if you don't, it deals one damage to you. Um, Meek Stone, any creatures with power greater than two do not untap during an untap phase. Um, the Mox Cycle, of course, is really good. They would all go in. Um, so Mox Emerald for... Green, Jet for Black, Pearl for White, Red for Ruby, and Blue for Sapphire. Um, Nibbin Rolls Disc, or Larry Nibbin's Disc. Um, forward to Cast, comes into play tapped, and you um, one colorless and tap, sacrifice it, and it destroys enchantments, artifacts, and creatures. Um, Obsidian Golem is 6 to cast, and it's a 4-6 vanilla artifact creature. Uh, Plateau is the white-red duel. Rod of Ruin is 4 to cast, 3 and tap. Dolls 1 damage to any target creature or player. Um, Savannah is the white-green. Scrubland is the white-black. Soul Ring, of course, would go in to a cube. 1, and then uh, to cast, tap. Add two colorless mana to your mana pool. Soul Net is part of the Lucky Charm cycle, but it's not tied to a color. It's tied to a creature going into your graveyard. So every time a creature goes into your graveyard, you can pay one and gain one life. Second Glasses of Urza. Um, white mana in your mana pool can be used as either white or red mana. Super useful for three mana. Uh, Taiga is the red green duel. The Hive is interesting. It's five casting. Five and then tap, put a 1-1 one, 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 one colorless insect artifact token with flying named Wasp on, Wasp onto the battlefield. So, 10 mana to get a 1-1. One, one. You would do it, you wouldn't be happy. Throne of Bone, uh, Throne of Bone, is the Black Lucky Charm. Time Vault is... Time Vault enters the battlefield tap. Time Vault doesn't untap during your untap step. If you would begin your turn while Time Vault is tapped, you may skip that tap turn instead. If you do untap Time Vault, and then tap to take an extra turn. Of course, with cards like Botaic Key and stuff like that, that's a really broken card, but it's super narrow, so I wouldn't put it in my cube, I don't think. 
Um, Tropical Island is the blue-green duel. Tundra is the white-blue duel. Underground Sea is the black-blue duel. Volcanic Island is the red-blue duel. Um, Wonder Orb is two. I'm going to read the Oracle. Players can't untap more than one land during their untap steps. Wonder Orb was super powerful at one point because it's a continuous artifact, and those at one point, if you tapped them, they would turn off. So if you tapped it on your opponent's turn with like an Icy Manipulator, you would get your untap step, and you would get to untap your lands while they were locked down on only untapping one land. So definitely a nice thing to do, but you could still do it with bounce, like cap size and stuff like that. So it's still always kind of a busted card. And then the last card for Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited is Wooden Spear, um, one to cast. Uh, it's the green lucky charm. Um, so that's it. So the next set up, my little list of sets tells me, is Arabian Nights. Um, so this is going to be a fairly long show um, because I kind of went through three sets. The next show will be much shorter because Arabian Nights was a hot 78 cards. Uh, so going to be a lot easier to go through that small of a set um, but to review for my cube um, for a powered cube I would include Armageddon, Balance, Savannah Lions, Swords to Plashers, Wrath of God, Ancestral Recall, Counterspell, Time Walk, Animate Dead, Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist, Lightning Bolt, Will of Fortune, Regrowth, The Ten Duels, Black Lotus, Mana Vault, The Moxes, and Soul Ring. Um, so um, that is everything. I want to thank everybody for listening and watching. Um, questions, comments, um, if there's anything in particular you want me to do um, for the next shows. Or, um, I'm hoping to have a few of these ready to go. Um, I will adjust when I can. Okay, thank you much. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, it really helps us out. You can find us on Twitter at MagicGathStrat, Facebook slash MagicGatheringStrat, or on the web, MagicGatheringStrat.com. There you can find articles and free prize-supported leagues. This is all brought to you by our Patreons and CardHoarder.com. If you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us at Patreon.com slash MagicGatheringStrat.